There can be only one. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. All out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. I'm too old for this shit. I can't believe that just fucking happened. Groovy. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we chew bubblegum and talk about movies. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me are my awesome, esteemed colleagues of film. First off is James Sullivan, also known as Hymitude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by The Fornicator, the William Hartnell Doctor's greatest weapon ever. The what? <laughs> Well, you heard me we're right. Here to talk about, we're, we're here to talk about movies, James. We're not. This is not about fornication. <laughs> and last, <clears throat> and the less I know about your fornications, the better. <laughs> yes, that's also true. <clears throat> uh, Watch an adventure in space and time, and you'll get the joke. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> And last but not least, Matt Brunei, also known as Animat. Hello, everybody. I'm not here to fornicate, unlike other pe- unlike some people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Today's topic of choice is movies based on video games, and <clears throat> the list. That <clears throat> excuse me. The list on Wikipedia also adds more to it you know there's documentaries on video games there's films that plot that plot center of video games there's so many different discussions to talk about but it's all about video games within movies or movies based on video games and who would like to start it off um i think i'll start off pretty much from the very from the very beginning and the and the whole thing about movies based on video games as we all know um Whenever there's a movie based on the video game, chances are, chances are, like, it's gonna be bad. Like, it's very rare that we can name a like a really memorable film that's based on a vi- on a video game. Like, the best ones are usually pretty much like they're good, they're okay, but they're not the best. That's the biggest issue. And the thing is, is that with um with with movies based on video games. The biggest problem that I think they have is that they're run by pe- – like, the people who are making – like, the people in the production of the movie based on a video game, they don't even know what a video game is. Like, they don't really know, like, the concept, what's the point of video games and all that stuff. Like, they don't know. They ha- they themselves haven't even played a video game or um, haven't, like, know what is a video game in general. I'm not saying all of them do, but – you know, they're like it's a big issue, and like I'll start from the very beginning. The um, hold on a sec. I think uh, I got the list. So I just need to scroll back up. Yes, we're gonna start off pretty much. Hold on, where is it? Uh, yes, I think we're start off with the very beginning. Super Mario Brothers. Oh God, mm. is this this is far away? From the actual game itself. Now, the, now, pretty much this is based on the classical, like the NES classic, uh, Super Mario Brothers. Mario has to jump through Goombas and all that stuff to save. Uh, do you uh, mean? Uh, uh, do you mean the uh, the live action movie from the nineties or this uh, nineteen eighty six Japanese release, Super Mario Brothers Peach Hime Kiyotsu Dai Sakusen? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the one that every that everyone would probably know when it comes to a Mario movie, the live action one with Bob Hoskins and uh, Dennis Hopper. Not, not the ja- not that Japanese one. I know what you're talking about. I've seen a few clips. It's and... weird. Like I, I, I think it's like <laughs> Bowser is like it's like head over heels over freaking Peach. It's weird. I gotta and, watch and, clips I, of that. I. It's Japan. That's all I can say. That, that's the best way to put it. But anyways, with Super Mario Brothers, like they've introduced many different concepts 
where like even to this day we wouldn't associate it to the Mario Brothers universe. Essentially in the movie, it's a world full pretty much full of dinosaurs and pretty much the Mushroom Kingdom is this complete dystopia. Like this dystopian city, essentially. And like nobody looks like anything from the games like we don't have turtles we don't have like a turtle like dragon for king koopa or bowser or whatever we don't have like evil brown mushrooms for goombas they're all dinosaurs essentially t-rexes raptors and all that stuff it just doesn't really like it doesn't feel so like cool Mario. although <laughs> But, and also, like, here's an interesting thing. It go like, this is a great example of nobody in the production knows what they're, like, what they're doing. Essentially, the directors, apparently, they were blasted for the fact that, like, they were blasted during the, the production for the fact that they don't know what they're doing. It's like this couple who wants to, who wants to make a movie of Mario because their kid loves it. Like, they haven't played it themselves. It's just their kid. And even Bob Hopkins, who played Mario, he, did, he didn't know about the game right until the movie's release. Mm -hmm. so, and, and that's essentially the big factor, is that this is one of the examples of, like, like, the reason why movies based on video games suck is mostly because it's run by people who haven't even played a video game or even know what it is. Well, that's a... Uh... That's a, a good analysis of what the of what the problem was back then. Uh, I, I, you might be amused by this story. Uh, uh, there's this is some something that I I heard uh, word of mouth, so I don't know how true this is. Uh, they said that Dennis Hopper. <laughs> yes, master. <laughs> they said that Dennis Hopper. Uh, uh, agreed to be in the movie because they he needed money to buy his kid a new pair of shoes. <laughs> really? And after the after that, their kid said, "Dad, I didn't need the money. I didn't need the shoes that badly." <laughs> what? Maybe that was just a joke. It could be. I, I can't. I, I've never yeah, heard of that. To. I've never it heard of that. It has to be. It has to be. I mean, it's like how expensive of freaking shoes does the kid want and number two like d is it really worth it for pretty much leaving a legacy of the two classical like the two most popular lines in the movie number one ba -ba. number two monkey <laughs> at least he didn't do the duck walk oh god cool huh <laughs> The one thing, oh god, you have, we found the one thing that's worse than the freaking, than the freaking Mar, than the freaking Mario movie, the freaking mm. CDI. The one thing that's worse than, that handled worse than the movies. Oh Jesus. Yeah. The, but uh... actually, actually, you know, actually not that true. If you think about it, Hotel Mario actually stays true more to the game. More than God Forsaken, uh, the movie, if you think about it. I mean, like, it's the world of the Mushroom Kingdom. You got the seven Koopalings. You got Bowser. Like, everything looks like what it's supposed to be. Horribly, yes, but it's like, it still looks, it's still defined as Mario and stuff like that. No matter the amount of toasters, toast, toast, and spaghettis are, are there. <laughs> It can still suck, though, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's bad, but like, it's it can easily be defined as Mario more than the uh, movie. Hmm. I see what you mean. Doesn't make it good, but it's yeah. Yeah. Enough said. So, moving on. Next movie. Um, yes. Uh, just in preparation for this, uh, 
for this special episode. Uh, and this is why I wish Morgan was here. Um, uh, he and I sat down and we watched uh, we watched two movies. Uh, one was King of Fighters. The other oh. was <laughs> the other was Tekken. Wait, the anime movie? Wait, is is it live action or anime? It's a live action movie. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, King of Fighters. Uh, it's a, it's amazing that we have a. It's amazing that we have a constantly interrupting, vibrating cell phone on the other end. <laughs> Maybe Already. your cell phone agrees with me on this. <laughs> Is it trying to get on the I just got a text. He said yes. Who said yes? The cell know. phone? Yeah, it's a cell phone. <laughs> We're not worthy. All hail the cell phone. <laughs> anyways, the... Uh, anyways, the... Uh, let's see. King of Fighters is... Let me start off and say that this is an interesting case of a film and that it stars uh, uh, Maggie Q, William Lee, and Ray Park, three ve- three of the most talented kung fu movie personnel with the absolute worst career choices. Oh. William Lee... William Lee is a guy uh, who I sort of became I sort of became a fan of when uh, back when I was watching Witchblade, which was a TV show. Uh, yeah, I know. Which uh, he didn't even he didn't even do much fighting for the first season, but he was better than everybody else. Uh, uh, he went on to star in movies, uh, Die Another Day, and Electra. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, need I say more? No. <laughs> so, so now here he is making this uh, King of Fighters game, and I can't even remember what character he was playing. Uh, but I just remember him in it, and I was like, "You have so much talent. Why do you waste it on this, on this stuff?" <laughs> the <laughs> and Ray and Ray Park is in it too. Freaking. Darth Maul is in this. Oh dear. Oh, and God. sucking. Oh wow. <laughs> Can't uh he plays he plays the bad guy here. It it's not it's not entirely their fault though. It's just the the direction, Shit. the fight choreography, it's poor. Here's the concept in this in this game. And they, I played King of Fighters. It's a, it's a. Yeah, isn't it one of those street, fighting games? Yeah, it's a Street Fighter clone that got popular. Mm-hmm. Perhaps even more popular than Street Fighter at, at some points in its, uh, in its uh, I, development. I would say, and, few, I I would say at a few points because like trying to top Street Fighter seems like a big. See, seems like a big stretch, honestly. Yeah. But but, but uh, I I would believe you if it were like a few if like a, at a few points. At a few points like in, in history, time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So this uh, this this movie has uh, has people. Um. Uh, entering the King of Fighters competition. Now, this is where this is where things get weird. Uh, they in, the best fighters enter this competition via Bluetooth earpieces. Earpieces. Uh, you uh, earpieces. Every time you fight, it's like jacking into the Matrix. You stick on the you stick on this this earpiece, and it takes you to another dimension. Uh, in which uh, everyone is suddenly dressed awesome, 
and uh, and everything looks uh, everything looks uh, too dark and cool to exist. But uh, the the idea just uh, fails on so many levels because when they start fighting with each other, uh, you can tell the difference. You can tell the difference between which actors were trained, uh, which actors were trained for years on, in the martial arts, and which actors spent about five weeks taking a combat course. That, that's how bad the fight choreography is in this movie. So that's... I, so we follow that up uh, the next evening uh, with Tekken, which uh, is a film that is hated by the... It, it is another uh, 2010 release. It is hated uh, by the game developers. It bombed in Japan. And when it came, so when it came to the United States, uh, it went directly to video. And after watching the movie, I can't for the life of me understand why. Because it was such a, it was a masterpiece compared to freaking King of Fighters. Ah. Wow. You had, honest to God, effort in this movie. I mean, honest to God, effort. The the people weren't just uh, jerking around in here in this movie when they fought. They were uh, when you when they dealt blows with each other. Uh, you actually you actually felt like they were dealing blows. Uh, I, maybe there was something. Uh, there was a competition storyline to it, and they didn't have to. They didn't have to fart around that with any, oh, oh, uh, I jacked into this uh, competition via earpieces, so it's all virtual and nothing's real, or something like that. This was, this was an actual competition. They, they made very good use of the, of the game's uh, different locations, hmm. I think. I think for this, uh, here was a nice little nod. In the uh, during the competition, they uh, they had a virtual stage uh, that the fighters would get onto that would actually change uh, in between in between rounds. So it would be like okay, uh, summoning beach stage or something like that, and suddenly they'd be on a a beach or whatever. That was an interesting idea because, you know, when you play fighting games, they have all these different locations and you're just sort of like, okay, how would they get from one location to the next? You guys know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of effort and I, I would actually highly recommend if you ever find Tekken, give it a watch. I mean, I, I think it deserves an audience. All right, yeah. Um, I've said enough. <laughs> yeah, I think you did. Um, let me, I was looking through the list over and over. And... Ah, ah, sounds good. Uh, I, I mentioned this film in the past, and I might just go briefly over it. Double Dragon has been... All right, so I was. Oh God! So in the past, I said Go back to the suck. <laughs> so I realized that Double Dragon is a post-apocalyptic uh, kind of uh, movie slash video game futurist kind of thing. I didn't notice that when I was playing the game, but I now I realize it is. <clears throat> I don't know why though. It was just weird how the video game doesn't even tell you that story. It just it just <clears throat> launches right into the game trying to fight get your girlfriend. But the movie. I mean, it does not, there's nothing that involves the plot whatsoever. I mean, it's set in the same era, but, uh, it's just hard to say, like, the point of the video game is you gotta fight and save your girlfriend, 
and there's two brothers, so at the end, you're like, okay, who, who gets the girl? And they fight at the end, too. The movie does not do that at all. It's just something fucking weird. It even has um, a paradox where they're fighting at the end, and there's a freaking video cabinet of Double Dragon. And it's like, why would you... It's like, they're probably thinking, oh, it's a nice little reference to the game. <laughs> no, then, yeah. Yeah, like, this is a per... Yeah, this is another great example of pretty much people the people who are working on an on a mo- on a movie which they don't know like what it is in the first place exactly like, like this is this is the perfect kind of film like maybe even more than Mar- than Mario Brothers where they, where you look at it and you go like where you get the feeling that the, the people who are making this have no idea what Double Dragon is yeah it's just like yeah, we're just make these two characters, uh, these Jimmy and Billy Lee, and then you know something happens in there. It features this Robert Patrick guy, this crazy, whacked out, coked up kind of guy, and mm-hmm. we have a we have a video cabinet in the background as a reference, and you know they'll they'll bang each other against it, and they'll see Double Dragon. And it's like, oh my god, that's a reference to the game. Oh my god, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. Like even. Like even Mario Bro, even the Super Mario Brothers movie, to an extent, it has like, it knows how to make references to the yes. game. Yes. Yeah. Like it, we do have like, as little as it is, there's still like people like go- there's still like, even though they're very inaccurate to the actual game, we still have Goombas, we still have Yoshi, we still have Princess Daisy, we still have like many elements from the original game yeah but in double dragon like they don't know what they're doing like there's not like maybe just a few characters and just the console they they did this completely wrong exactly they just like okay we know the basic basic bare minimum uh, premise of it we just have to combine it to make our own thing make it unique then from the game and it just doesn't work out no, it's just like they they only got their also information. Had it's like they got it's also it's just that they got their information. It's it's like like one executive got all the information he needs from one of his kids. Like he asked, "What what's Double Dragon?" And like the kid doesn't know better. It's like, "Oh, these two guys, and they they're fighting bad guys." And it's like, "Okay, okay, what what are they called? Uh, Bimmy and Jimmy?" Oh, okay, okay, we'll do that. I was gonna say, thank God I didn't actually name the character Bimmy. <laughs> no, that would have been a fucked up choice. Like, did you get the right game? Did you actually do the original, or did you do number three? Uh, no, no, no. The best part—they got all the information from that angry video game nerd episode. <laughs> that would be so funny. Uh, but no. You really want me to make a movie out of this, son? Yeah, sure, I love Double Dragon. <laughs> oh, man, but yeah, Super Mario Brothers actually does make great references to the game, even though it doesn't really make it out to be a great film about the game. It just, it's a great homage to the game, but yet it doesn't. <clears throat> Big Bertha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Big Bertha was a oh, great, God. great example. Like, I didn't know it was, <laughs> Big Ber- I didn't know that was a reference Jesus. to the fish in the movie, and I'm like, Big Bertha, why does it sound familiar? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh good god I, I can think of so many bad jokes to go with it but I, I think it'll be safe not to um, oh god along with in the, in the game she was uh, in the game you saw a big fish in the movie you saw Mario going for a big fish exactly How about... yes. um, talk about tuna that same year, I would like to see. I would, I would like to see the Big Bertha in the movie just become the Big Bertha in the game. It's like, it's like it's still like in the, the appearance is still her, but she still acts like a, a big fish that would eat Mario. <laughs> in the same year that Double Dragon came out, another one came out known as Street Fighter. Oh Jesus. And oh, this God. this movie has made um, 
a particular someone pretty popular with this uh, very good uh, cutaway gig of, of course. Ah. Oh, yes. Without, oh, now I remember. The Nostalgia Critic reviewed this movie, and he has been using the clever cutaway joke of, of course, without his reviews. And But the movie itself... Uh... <laughs> Is it bad? Of course! <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> it, it's, it's just... I guess it does seem like the game at one point, but it just falls apart completely. I mean, yeah, like here's the problem with street. Here's the problem with these movies based on fighting games. Essentially, you got all these, you know, like sure you got all these different characters, but is there really a story? I mean, nobody really put. Like, when you play fighting these fighting games like Mortal Kombat or um, Street Fighter or Soul Calibur or something like that, like, there is a... Technically, yes, there is a story there, but, like, you do we do we really care? Do we really Not put focus on that? No, we just focus on kicking the other person's butt. Yeah. I was like, okay, all right, I'm Ryu. All right, let's fight. Okay, Chun-Li. Okay, next. All right, uh, Blanca. All right, next. All right, it's uh, uh, I forgot all the others. <laughs> Fudge <Fletch> nabbit. <laughs> I, mean, I was when, like, when, you mean when you wrote this point. movie, you didn't stop and when you wrote this movie, and you didn't said, stop and read the pamphlet that comes with the game? <laughs> <laughs> of course they did. That's their script. Hmm. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Speaking of fighting games, um, yeah. I guess I guess one of the prime examples of being a good one is Mortal Kombat, because it does. All right, like, let me get this straight here. It it the plot is just you know something happens and they go into fighting tournaments and they have to save the world. That's pretty mm -hmm. much it. But you know the fighting and the characters are all there. It's glorious. I mean, you see all the characters from the movie. You see Johnny Cage, you see Sonya, you see Scorpion, you see Reptile. You see everybody you know from the video game. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's like it's the best movie I out there. It's not like, the best, but it's, it's like not, a, it's not the. It's the, like it's good. It's yeah. good. Like you, you can't really hate on it. Yeah, exactly. Annihilation, on the other hand. Uh, this, <laughs> yeah, the sequel. The, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, the geez. dialogue, the dialogue is the only thing that that uh, prevents the uh, Mortal Kombat films from ever being uh, universal classics. Let me say. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> so. But anyway. Uh, looking through this list. Um, huh. I actually have a movie that I want to talk about, and this is actually an example okay. of a really good one. Believe it or not, yeah, believe it or okay. not, a movie, a, a movie based on a on a video game that's actually really good. This one actually. Well, I talk about Tekken. now. You know when you watch when you look at a video game, and sometimes you look at at like some of the cutscenes, and you thought, "Wow, that looks amazing." You know, like sometimes they can even look like even better than some of the movies out there now, like some of the animated films out there now. Well, he, here's an example of pretty much one movie, well, few movies, created by um, the developers of the game that ends up looking really amazing. And I'm talking about the Final Fantasy films, both Spirit Within and Final Fantasy VII Advent of Children. Now, when it comes to the script, I wouldn't say it's the best, it's like... It's the best out there. Like, it's pretty complex. It's confusing. It's not really that much a beat. But holy crap, may I say the visuals, these are some of the best looking, this is some of the best looking animation you will ever find, like, period. My God, mm -hmm. it is amazing. And plus the fact that it is, it, it was made in 2001. That, and that, that is striking. This was during the time when, Films like Shrek, uh, Monsters, Inc., 
uh, and Jimmy Neutron and many other animated films released during that time, it was pretty much during the inf- like the beginning of computer animation. It's like it didn't look like compared to right now. It didn't look that. It doesn't look that great. But Final Fantasy Spirit Within, it looks like it looks just amazing. It looks it, it even surpasses many different animated films of today. Like you know, it, like it has far superior animation than Godforsaken, um, uh, Free Birds, or Escape from Planet Earth, or Cloudy, or the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball movies, and many other ones. It just surpasses all of them. It's amazing. And, and such a technological marvel, I gotta say. That's it. It is. It is a, a marvelous film to look at. I did get uh, the only knock that I that I had against uh, Final Fantasy, and this was uh, uh, the Spirits Within. And this is aside from the fact that they have very little to do with the games. Um, uh, it was. For me, it was kind of boring in some parts. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, I mean, the story, like, it doesn't have the best writing out there. Square, I'll be honest, Square Enix is not usually well known for having um, a good, like, writing a good plot for their games like Final Fantasy. And usually when it's good, it can be, re- it, it gets, like, really, really complex and confusing. Like, um... It took, like it is really difficult for me to try to comprehend Kingdom Hearts. Like it really is. like I'm getting the gist of it, but like <laughs> yeah. getting the complete knowledge is That's... not as easy as yeah. comprehending like a, a book franchise like Harry Potter or something like that. No, but Epic so... Mickey, that's uh, that's quite easy to understand for you. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> that's another <enough>, story. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you just need a good dis- you just need some good Disney knowledge I'm already there <laughs> <laughs> oh man um, so moving forward uh, here's, anyways uh, moving on. Um, there are some films on this list that uh, that um, that that proves something uh that that is a very good lesson for for most filmmakers as a as a a recipe not to do, and that is cobbling together. Uh, this what? Cobbling together. What's hobbling together? Cobbling. Hop hobbits. C. Not H C C O B B. Cobbling together. Co- co- cobbling like corn on the cob. Oh, cobbling together. Yes. Yes, we were hobbiting these films together. Uh, um, the films. Uh, well, when you the put films... the Hobbit one and the Hobbit two together, that you're hobbling two films together. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> and it is, and then you stick the third unfinished Hobbit film on there, and it's one long ass movie. <laughs> uh, but seriously, uh, with uh, oh, let's see, I'm looking at uh, you previously brought up the nostalgia critic uh, Digimon the movie, which I have not seen, is an example of something that was that was cut together from three different sources to try and make a sustainable feature-length film. Um, but I'm going to talk about a few a few other examples here that, uh, that they tried to pass off. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. Uh, for starters, this was a this was a late '90s uh, anime film. Um, uh, when it when it first came out, it was uh, it was dubbed by the, uh, the the Sonic fan base as Sonic Anime. It was a two episode long anime series uh, made by 
uh, production team that had uh, that had actually previously worked on producing some of the animated segments for the Sonic games in the 90s. Uh, mainly the introduction to and the outro to uh, Sonic CD, which today still looks uh, fantastic, I think. Um, the problem with uh, this film is that we've got, we have two, we have two episodes, uh, if you will, uh, tied together, and it almost works. It almost works, but uh, there have been there have been uh, uh, many movies uh, cobbled together, or where they just uh, where they just uh, cut together episodes of a TV show and released it as the movie. And for some reason, it never works. You know, you can do the history. You can do the history on that. Find me a classic. You won't. Um, but then, bring up the case of the dubbing. The dubbing is hilariously bad. It uh, <laughs> this uh, uh, Sonic sounds like a woman. Tails like sounds like he has a cold. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even kidding about about the first one. I I thought it was I thought it was like Mary Martin playing Peter Pan or something. Uh, that's how that's how effeminate Sonic sounds in this movie. Oh, You're going to be dead, Eggman. <laughs> uh, so what's the second scenario here? What is the second one? Uh, we have Shenmue, the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a different case. Uh, this is known as a cutscene film. I didn't know that this was a subgenre, but after, uh, after the first Shenmue game I played through, thought it was amazing, couldn't wait. Uh, heard that there was a movie coming out. Couldn't wait to get my eyes on it. And then, uh, as soon as I oh, saw... Yeah, what that's Shen oh, yeah, it's like a Shenmue, right? Shenmue, yes. The, uh, the, the epic, uh, uh the, the epic Dreamcast thing. game. Well, there are some, there's some scenes with a motorcycle, but yeah. You get the idea. It's a, it's an RPG game that I actually played when I was younger, so it has that, that distinction from everything else. Um, it was RPG. This is a. I thought it was like more side scroller or something. Well, not side scroller. I mean, like, I thought it was like. Um, uh, how, can, how can I put this? Kind of like an adventure point and click. What? Uh, no. <laughs> what? what? This was on the Dreamcast. Well, you didn't have a mouse. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, Although... there are some, game, some console games where it's like point and click. <laughs> that was definitely not this one, is what I'm saying. This was, uh, let's see, this uh, Shenmue the movie. Uh, imagine my disappointment. When I find out that Shenmue the movie is nothing but the cutscenes from the, the, the game, game. <laughs> slap back it's like, to back. It's like what the fuck la, 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 la. is this? <laughs> and to fill in some of the gaps, they have gameplay footage. Now, wouldn't you rather be playing the game than, than watching, watching that? Yeah. I, like, I can... I bet okay, you... Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, I, I, that's like the equivalent. If you take, like, a Pokemon movie, as, like, you just see Ash walking along, and then suddenly you just, like, they're going to start a battle, and then suddenly the game just... No, the movie just interrupted into, like, the original red and blue game, it just suddenly goes... And it's like, it suddenly goes 8-bit. Just showing, like, random gameplay 
of someone barely winning against another trainer. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I can only think of one... I can only think of one example where uh, gameplay footage was actually somewhat properly used in a, in a movie based off of a video game, and I'm going to say it was House of the Dead. Huh? Uh, are, are, you, are you kidding? You better not be kidding. Somewhat me. properly. I, I say oh, somewhat I properly. Think I might the know film what you is mean. far. I say somewhat properly because no, it's uh, the film is far from being a masterpiece. Uh, I I don't 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 say the director's name. We don't want to give him any more popularity. I can't nope. remember it right now. No, nope. I don't um, remember him. I, I know who he is, but I just can't think of his name. He's he's not very good. Oh, at I directing. think I know his name. He's he's not very good at directing. That's what I all I'll say. But uh, but I will say the the clever nod to the to the game was using Is the credit this? sequence. No, Matt. No. No. Oh no. No. Oh okay. For those of you who don't know, I thought it was Paul W S Anderson. No, he's um. Okay. He's a different breed. No, I would rather watch the, his wait, movies. Wait, he did the Resident Evil games, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Resident Evil movies. Yes. Constantly casting his wife, but all that's right, besides right. the point. Had him the House of the Dead. Um, uh, the uh, the way that the game footage is used in there is as a as a sub is a, as fodder for the opening credits. Oh, which is a good way to nod to the game on which uh, your film is supposedly based. And in some parts, it was actually used uh, as clever transition footage from one scene to another. Oh. Hmm. So, um, he actually uh, he actually did score a few points there. It does not save the film, though. No. Yeah. Need I say more? No, you don't need to. Um, uh, <laughs> um, I think it. I think it's about uh, probably your turn to come up to bat. I know, I know, I know that, Mister. Actually, can I can I just uh, name one? Sure. Um, can I can I go. just name one more, one more? I just need to slip out. I was saying, anyways. Yep. Um, go. one thing that I want to mention. Well, um, one film that I want to mention, actually a whole series of films that I want to mention, is that on the list that you gave me, um, when we first, like, when we first start, better, we just lo looked at the entire list, and you will first notice that there is a bunch of freaking Pokemon movies out there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if we're going to talk about this, like, we have to talk about the Pokemon movies. Yep. It, initially, technically, it is based on the TV series. Of Pokemon, since we do have the characters like Ash and Brock and uh, a girl, like the random girl that would be there, depending on the on the season, like Misty or May or Dawn or someone like that. Mm -hmm. But afterward, but pretty much the Pokemon movies have a pretty interesting history. From Pokemon one, from the first movie all the way to five, they were pretty much released in theaters. Then afterwards, they were just out on, um, they were just getting straight to DVD releases or just getting like, um, getting like, uh, premieres on, like, on Cartoon Network or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And initially, from Pokemon 1 to 8 was the original four kids, um, the original four kids cast. And then afterwards, from 9 to continue, like, afterwards, is pretty much the new English dub. So pretty much, um, some of the noteworthy ones I have to mention include, well, of course, there's the first Pokemon movie. It's not like featuring um, uh, Mewtwo Strikes Back. It's not really the most, the best one, I will agree. And like, but it's like, like we do get interesting battles and it's like, it, it was like a big thing during that time since it, it is Pokemon 
and the fact that it was once before uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, it was the highest grossing film based on on a car on, not on a cartoon, but uh, on a video game. And I think to this day, it remains like the second highest grossing ever. But for me personally, um, I think the best ones that I remember the most is Pokemon the movie three and po and the eighth one, which is the last that the original voice cast did was Lucario and the Mysteries of Mew. Um, I gotta say, it's been such a long time since I've seen uh, Pokemon the Movie 3. It's pretty much the spell of the unknown, where it features Entei and pretty much the mystical powers that the unknown um, holds. And as for the uh, eighth one, Lucario and the Mysteries of Mew, is pretty much um, the story of how Lucario pretty much uh, got got imprisoned into uh, into a staff and then a thousand years later pretty much got released by Ash because they share the same aura and pretty much we learn all and they're actually really as movies they're actually really good like like from what I remember in Lucario is that like we learn a lot about the characteristics of uh, Luca of Lucario and and uh, pretty much uh, many different developments from the other characters like Ash and, P and even Pikachu when he got captured by when um, Mew decided to take him in in uh, in the big tree of life, pretty much. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much my, my input on the Pokemon movies. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, uh, that that's uh, I'd I'd say from where I'm standing, uh, that's that uh, pretty much sums it up. I I admit though I never really got into the uh, the Pokemon craze, and that's why I haven't said too much about it. I tried. I'm a for the love of me, for love of uh, God is my witness. I uh, I tried. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm actually in a Pokemon craze right now. I'm playing freaking uh, Pokemon X and uh, yeah, Pokemon X. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Pokemon master. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna be a but, Pokemon uh, master. <laughs> I, I think I think in my case it was I played I played one of the games and I don't like the I don't like the turn-based RPG. Uh, formula. It does not. It's not action packed enough for me. Uh, it it's kind of it's kind of boring. I don't I don't play cards. But uh, that's essentially what it is. And I I found it even for a video game so cheesy when some people, you know, they would be they would be training. Or, or you would have the the early on levels where uh, you didn't really have to fight anybody except for, or challenge everybody except for maybe to to get a little feel for the game. You'd just be walking around town and asking people questions, uh, just random questions, uh, casual questions, and they would be like, "Hey, you're in my way. Move it. <laughs> Let's fight." <laughs> I mean, can you imagine it? Can we? Can you imagine if uh, if there was a if if that's how life was? It'd just be like walking up to somebody in the restaurant and it's like, "Excuse me, do you know where the bathroom is?" Hey, you're in my way. Move it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello, Hi. hello there. I'm trying to get through here. Excuse me, you're in my way. <laughs> I'll just it back. Hey, do you have a bus ticket? I don't have a bus ticket. Do you? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, I'll bail uh, so... you for a ticket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, this is a. Uh, uh, this is the way things are in this society. Fights can break out uh, between between cute little animals uh, at any given moment. <laughs> so. Um, so when it came to the the Pokemon franchise as a whole, getting 
one movie after another. I I just uh, I just didn't even watch it. I, I was it, and it was a case of uh, I actually started to get annoyed by it because it uh, it was really pushing something that was just so 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 popular and and it was the one thing that was that popular that I could not get into it was like uh it's like how my little pony friendship is magic is now it's uh, uh, right, right, something right. extremely popular but you're just like the one guy that's or one or one or two people that's not into it so whenever you see the the advertisements on tv you're just kind of like uh yeah 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 well like and unlike um like and unlike pokemon i'm sure like one day um uh i'm sure like the my little pony craze will just like die down like there's going to be a generation five that'll probably or generation six that'll probably ruin it for all the bronies out there and they'll just like give up yeah uh, yeah, I, like that's my feeling with the My Little Pony franchise. Eventually, they're gonna turn back into their little girly, into well, their more um, their more girly roots where they where they focus solely on the girl demographic, and there'll be those desperate bronies that'll try to that'll try that'll try to convince people like, no, it's so good, it's so good, it still has Pinkie Pie. Uh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> when did this become brony talk? <laughs> okay, we James, were talking about. You're, I blame you. <laughs> just well, out of I was just using that as a point of comparison, but it was not meant to as a. It was not meant as a, a bridge to another subject. No. <laughs> Matt. Tune in next time when we talk about bronies. <laughs> <laughs> I was We've gonna, already, uh, we don't even need to. We don't even need to bring out the dartboard. Don't even need to. Just we like, got our next subject. <laughs> Not. There's rumored movies that are going to be based on video games. I've seen like Crazy Taxi at one point was being made into a movie, which was going to be directed by Richard Donner of the Superman movies. But <laughs> that fell through. Fell through. Never came to happen. Actually, I really want to see that happen. And uh, recently, I just found out that there was going to be, there was a rumored Metroid movie directed by John Woo, mm. which would have been great because John Woo is a great director, and Metroid is, you know, it's a, it's a really good game to be adapted into a movie. But you know, the thing is that the rights to the game were kind of expired when he bought them, so if he if he gets the rights to the game again, he should definitely direct the Metroid movie. Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, John John Woo is a, without a doubt, an interesting acting action director. He could probably helm it. Um, I'm looking at a few at a few titles here. Uh, these. Uh, here's uh, here's some interesting here's another interesting subgenre that uh, that Bear is talking about um, with the uh, with the uh, the internet we have uh, a new kind of audience here uh, and that is uh, I want to talk about a few cases of fan films that were actually worthwhile. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, for starters, uh, um, now these, uh, the, the, the thing about, uh, the thing about uh, fan games, or fan, fan-made movie games, is, uh, is that, uh, as a as a fan, usually you're inclined to, or at least I am, inclined to uh, give them a little bit of leeway because whatever they're working with, it's not nearly 
they don't nearly have the uh, uh, the technical resources or the budget that a major Hollywood production does, and that's that's basically how you have to uh, how you have to uh, to look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, with the uh, with the case of Mega Man, the Eddie Lebron directed film from 2010. Uh, here we have something made completely without uh, Capcom's uh, supervision. It was entirely independently uh, scripted, funded, and and shot. And it was a feature-length film that tried to do, tried its best to uh, to do what what they would have done if they, if Hollywood it could make an accurate video game movie based on what they were working with. And mm-hmm. I thought, and I thought it turned out to be pretty decent. Yes. I, I mean, you've got, uh, uh, there were some, there were some scenes that I, I think uh, could have been built on a little bit better, but that was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I saw it too, and I thought it was like, wow, did they actually make that? It's like, you'd be astonished of what they did with the movie. I mean, sure, the effects were, you know, low-budgeted, you know, because it's a low-budget film, but otherwise, you'd be just, you're like thinking, it's a Mega Man movie. It's based on Mega Man. You know, so you, see, you see Mega Man there. You see all the villains. I'm like, wow. It's mm-hmm. it was really good in my opinion as well. I mean, it was something like somebody made this. Holy crap! Somebody's very creative. Yeah, if they can make a movie this good based on that that big of a budget, imagine what they could do with a with a blockbuster budget. Exactly, it would have been that times like ten thousand, pretty much. Mm-hmm. It would have been the. It would have been the Iron Man of video game movies. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about that, yeah, that would have been. It would be. Uh, and he went on to next direct another video game movie. Uh, based on, here's my boy, Sonic. Uh, but with the, uh, but with that one, it was only a short. Uh, possibly made to, possibly made to, to to lead to a bigger story, but you know how these independent, uh, free to watch, uh, things are. Mm-hmm. And at this point, he was, uh, he was uh, established enough that he got uh, a lot of familiar faces. And familiar voices. Yes, yes, I saw that, and I was like, I was flabbergasted to see how what, who he got, and I was like, fuck, that's amazing. I mean, I I could understand if you got Doug Walker, James Rolfe, and uh, Brent Black. You know, those guys. That, that's internet movie stuff. That's what they do. They're not. Yep. Uh, they're not bigwig Hollywood celebrities, although. Exactly. I have heard Doug Walker's got a bit of an ego, but that's uh, from some uh, some people who are rather disenfranchised with him, so I won't yep. go too far into mm-hmm. that. Uh, the fact alone that they got uh, Jaleel White, yes. the voice actor from the Sonic cartoons back in the 90s, uh, who is not a big name Hollywood actor, but he is someone you would not expect. Exactly, yeah. It's like you hear I'm, the voice and you're like, oh my god, he's back in the role of Sonic. He was in the cartoons back in the day. Oh my god, and you get like a fangasm because you used to watch the cartoons back in the day. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, uh, it. And if they'd, uh, and if they'd 
cranked up his uh, his voice by just uh, one notch on the pitch, it would have been a major fangasm because it does sound like he's gotten older. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that, but it still give you gave your memories of the cartoon days, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah, because Joel White is not a huge Hollywood star. He is known for his TV work, especially you know with Sonic, and then of course Family Matters was being Urkel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he was he was playing that that guy for over ten years. Mm-hmm. So, he's 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 like a cult following actor. You know, people love him for what he does. And seeing him back uh, at Sonic was pretty cool. He shows up at. Uh, he shows up at uh, conventions, I'm sure, or something like that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's all I that's all I well not I, all I have to say about fan films, but uh, I did actually see a Shenmue fan film that was better than the the official movie that they uh, chopped together on it, hmm. and it it was it was better because it was it was fans poking fun at the game. Mm-mm. Uh, they it was called live action Shenmu I, I think they had a guy very poorly dressed up like uh, Rio the the character from the game and what they did was they had him going around an actual town they they an actual city they uh, asking people questions people on the street questions of what uh, uh, what the guy would ask from the game and people people not it not knowing that they were being uh that they were being caught on candid camera literally here their their reactions are just uh priceless (laughs) i mean he's walking around he comes up to people and he's like i'm looking for the man who murdered my father And they're like, uh, good luck with that. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, good, good luck with that. Um, yeah. Do you know anything about the Nine Dragons? Get, uh, get away from me. <laughs> who, who the hell are you? Get away from me. You're creeping me out. Uh. Oh, my God. So, some people, and that, uh, that works because... It, it's it's fans doing it, it's fans uh, having fun with something that they love. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Now let's say it it works it works in that that uh, that category. If you if you let's say if you did that trying to make a movie, would that work? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Until I don't I, think so. Uh, 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 no, not at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <clears throat> so I'm looking through the list for that one last screw with your mind kind of movie that I usually end with. And this is under the subcategory of films that plot-centered a video game, you know, usually like The Wizard had like Super Mario 3 as a centered around the plot kind of thing. It's like, oh, Super Mario Bar 3 before its release is in there. Oh my gosh. Um, there's one film that I'm just looking at. I'm like, this is Stranger Danger. This is not very. This is a French drama film. It's called Kung Fu Master. It's a love story between a 40 year old woman and a 15 year old Kung Fu Master. Addict. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So, this 15-year-old is addicted to playing Kung Fu Master, which is a arcade game of which you play the role of Thomas, who goes after... His girlfriend, who's been kidnapped, it's like it's like a Super Mario ripoff, pretty much, but it's with Kung Fu. It's, it's 
side-scrolling action. But he's a 15-year-old, he's addicted to it, and this 40-year-old falls in love with him. Okay, this is wrong on so many levels. It is, it is. I'm looking at him like... I'm looking at him like, uh, hello, that's stranger danger because he's not legal, first of all. And uh, and first off, you, you would be old enough to be his mother. <laughs> well, let, let's look at this uh, from, from the other perspective. Let's say that, uh, let's say that uh, they were, at, it, it appears that, uh, judging by... <sighs> <laughs> it it appears uh, that judging by um, the synopsis here and even the title, uh, that um, you know it's it's named after a video game. Yeah, and it confuses people. An officially licensed Nintendo game. I remember Kung Fu Master. Used it's one of the earliest side-scrolling beat 'em ups. Very very basic and yet somehow catchy at the same time. Uh, was this at all licensed as a as a promotional film? I have no clue. I wouldn't think so because it's just I I uh, no <laughs> no. Actually, if you look, I'm looking at the. Uh, Wikipedia page for Kung Fu Master, and they mentioned the related film, and it's like, uh, the game is featured prominently in a live-action film dealing with the affair between a 40-year-old woman and a... F- now, this one says 14-year-old boy with, who's obsessed with the game. When he finally beats it after six months, he asks the bartender to give the older woman to call to let her know. The bartender, initially a bit dismissive, but still picks up the phone. However, she cannot get the message because she's not... A- home and the bartender reaches her daughter who is too young to be the messenger what the fuck <laughs> that's confusing what the fuck is this French movie I don't know I just thought it was like the most fucking confusing movie featuring a video game it's it's like you're thinking of I think it's like for me I'm thinking of, it's like the wizard where they feature a game and this movie it features a kid who is obsessed with the game and he plays it and plays it and then there's a, a love affair and there's what? Uh, you just beat Kung Fu Master. It's time to get laid. She was a forty-year-old woman. Can you call She's me? old enough to be your mom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just it just threw me off when I was reading. I was like, "Is this for fucking real?" Oh my god. Oh. Uh, this uh, this is this is not a good way to advertise your video your, game. Your video game. It's like yeah, oh, Play, playing this game will get you laid you know, with a you, with oh. someone who's twenty five years older than you. <laughs> I can't stop fucking laughing. I just it uh. oh my god. Okay, that I'm speechless now. I'm gonna end the episode because there's nothing else that could beat that. Movie. If you want a good video game based film uh, that uh, from the '80s that is very overlooked, pick The Last Starfighter. Yes, please. Yes, just check yes. Out, check out The Last Starfighter for the love of God. It's a great movie that features around video games. Yes. All right. All so, right. why don't you pick a number between one through twenty? Uh, <laughs> put the pressure on 15 you. Fifteen because uh, fifteen because that's way too young to be nailing a a forty year old woman. <laughs> okay. Oh fuck's sake. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, fifteen. Movie musicals. Uh, <laughs> yes. Movie yes. musicals. Yes. 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 <laughs> So, the next episode will feature movie musicals, which is different from movies based on Broadway shows. Movie musicals is pretty much like the jukebox musicals. Like, there's movies that feature 
music as a, and with dancing, and it'll get more in details next time. Okay. So with that, this has been Cinema Royale. I am out of gum. I need to get more gum for next time. And I bid you adieu till next time. All right. Ciao for now, folks. See you later, dude.